All right, just going to make a video refuting the Calvinistic twisting of John chapter 1 verse number 13 to prove their false doctrine of predestination and also denial of free will in the context of man's salvation. So I'm going to show, it's going to read 1 John chapter 1 verse number 13 and showing how Calvinists rip out of context to prove their false doctrine. So let's read the text. John chapter 1 verse number 13 says, Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now they take this and say, see, you know, it's not your will. It's, you don't have free will to come to salvation, come to God in salvation. Uh, is that what the text is saying in context? Let's actually look at the text in context. They ignore verse 11 and verse 11 and 12, which give details to a fuller for a fuller understanding of John chapter one, verse number 13. Let's, let's look at the verses from verse 11 down to verse 13. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to then gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now what's going on here? Well, it simply states that you're not born a child of God by the will of your parents in the flesh. Compare this with John chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. Let's turn there. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is when he is old? Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. What's going on in this text? Well, being born again is spiritual, not physical, and it's all of Christ. That's When you compare the two texts, that's what it's saying. It's saying you're not born of a child of God by the will of your parents. So ironically, it actually proves the opposite. You can also compare this with 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 down to verse 23. 1 Peter... Uh, sorry, I just ran, went, I got some exercise, so I'm panting right now, so just... I have a weird habit of exercising before I do videos, so it does help boost serotonin levels. But First uh, Peter chapter one verse eighteen and twenty three, for as much as you know that ye were not ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold for your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up, believe in God that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, uh, seeing that ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto into unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed. There is not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So it's talking about being born again, spiritually speaking. This does not exclude free will, but rather verse 11 actually proves free will to receive or reject Christ. Notice verse 11, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. They chose not to accept him. Okay. It also uh, compared verse 11 with Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 53. It disproves, it disproves the heresy of, of uh, irresistible grace. Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 53. Go there. Acts 7, verse 51 to 53. Says, Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now. Uh, of whom ye have been now, the betrayers and murderers, uh, who have received the law with the disposition of angels and have not kept it. They chose not to accept it, and even a second time, they were given a second chance, and they chose by their own free will to resist it. It disproves irresistible grace. Also compare this with, with Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 down to verse 31, a good picturing of the Greek white throne judgment. He's where God says, I have called, but ye refused. So uh, they, they rip the verse out of context, and they won't read it, in context, which actually proves free will. So I just want to show you how Calvinists, once again, have to rely on scripture twisting and ripping verses out of context to prove their false doctrine, their, their Gnostic false doctrine of Calvinism. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.